I could have promised. I re Maybe it was already reversed. Great morning. Y'all think it's going to snow tomorrow? Tabitha? What? Is That's what I heard. Huh? Is it in the forecast? That's what I heard. Jesus, make a way. <laughs> That's Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Hola, mi familia. Como estas? Good morning, Miss Beautiful Nancy Cruz. How are y'all? Yeah. When is it going to snow? Y'all think it's going to snow? You think it's going to snow again? You think it's going to happen? No. Yes, this is a fancy hairstyle. Haha. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Y'all good? Tanisha, what's up? I was trying to see her weather forecast. Hey, Britt, Britt. Never mind. Never mind. 58 degrees in Tennessee. High of 67. It's going to be, it is going to be, what was it, 71 today here in Jackson, Mississippi. Y'all good? Thank you. 71. 71. 71 today. What? We can get our shorts back out. I told y'all this weather here. <laughs> good morning. Thank you, Alicia. I love y'all. Good morning, Miss Sandra. How are you? Y'all good? Hey. Y'all sending me the hands. Y'all ready to go into prayer? Of course you are. With the prayer warriors. 5.57 a.m. Y'all ready? Let's go. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Thank you. Gracias. Hola, Liz. ¿Cómo estás? Oh, y'all are so sweet. Hey, Cash. What happened? She, what? She said she didn't look at you before you got off. <laughs> <laughs> so she looking at surprise! Like, Who is Tabitha, surprise! <laughs> okay. Y'all ready? Let's go into prayer. I love y'all. Let's type in. This is my year. This is my year. Brittany, make sure you type it in for me. But I'm, I'm not going to be selfish. I'm going to say this is our year. Okay, y'all. This is our year. It's our year. Y'all believe that? Good morning, Karen. How are you this morning? All right. Let's go into prayer. Thank you. Y'all so sweet. Everybody's giving me compliments. Well, thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Mi familia. All right. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord, you're so good to us. And we just thank you for bringing us back together again. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege and honor of doing life with the Warrior Nation. Father, we love them so much. And we just thank you for what you are doing, what you've already done, and what you are about to do. Father, we thank you for your grace that is definitely covering us during this fast. Lord, please, with the Warriors, as we continue into this 40-day fast, Lord, we honor you. And we pray that you are getting the glory out of our sacrifice. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. And we thank you so much for teaching us your word every single morning. And we Thank you for allowing us in on Heaven's Conversation. Today is no different. We rely totally on you. You are our dynamic teacher, and we honor you. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. We thank you for the work of the cross. We thank you that because of the work of the cross, we have access into eternity and access to our Father. We just thank you, Father, for all that you've done, Lord. You're so good. Y'all, let's just take a moment and tell the Lord just how good he is. Father, you're good. Everything about you is good. It's the essence of who you are, and we just thank you that you're a God of love. You're a God of grace. You're a God of justice, and you're a God of mercy. You are a God who provides for us. You never Never turn your back on us. You never change your mind about us, Lord. You love us and your love for us is unconditional. We thank you today for your unconditional love. We thank you today for forgiveness, Lord. Sometimes it's hard to forgive ourselves or others, but then we look at how you forgive us and how Jesus pay the ultimate sacrifice for our forgiveness and we just thank you for it this morning be with us today father we just thank you for every gift giver lord everyone who is blessing warrior nation ministries through their tithes and offerings gifts and donations and father thank you that they are allowing us to add captions to these videos lord thank you father they're allowing us to take these prayers around the world lord we just honor you for what they are doing and we ask you to forever give them seed because that is your word that you will always give seed to the sower and so we thank you that for every giver lord their pockets will never be empty and lord just for the warrior nation as the whole we thank you god that this is their best year this shall be their best year yet and it only gets better from here we honor you for your goodness we thank you for your love please bless our time together father it is in jesus name that we do pray amen amen great morning day 14 for us uh day 10 if you all started the fast on january the 2nd how's it going how are y'all doing today oh why are y'all sad what is it some of them are crying. I don't like when my family cries. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to cheer you up. I'm going to give you weather forecast. You ready? Okay, right now in Jasmine, Mississippi, it is 63 degrees with a high of 71. Showers today actually have a 50% chance of rain. Uh, the winds are coming to the south, southeast at 4 miles per hour. Humidity is 89%. Okay, so like even when it's cold, why is our humidity still so high? We're going to have to sit down with the meteorologist here and have a little warrior TV. What do you all think? Yeah, I, I want somebody to... Explain, I'm going to say, just like people message me, say, explain to me why you do this. I'm going to say, explain to me why we always have such high humidity. And they're going to be like, lady, who are you? Why do I have to explain anything to you? But seriously, that is a question for me. And since I'm not a meteorologist, 
Maybe you are, and maybe you can help us out on that. Why is our humidity always so high, even when it's cold? Okay, well, that's my question for today. Sun goes up at 7.02 a.m., goes down at 5.14 p.m. Warrior Nation on Facebook. Please share this video, por favor. Thank you so much. Help us take these prayers around the world. We've added captioning. You all are helping us add the captioning. Now, help us share the videos once the caption is added. So, please share the video. We thank you so much for that. Okay, we ready? We're doing a flash sale today. And we're going to do it on the prey. Uh, I'm wearing the shirt, ladies. And we also have the headband. And it's really cool. So, we have the shirts on sale for, I want to say, about $8 off. It's, it's already, the price is already marked down. We're going to do it until about noon today. And then the headbands are only only $12.99, and they're really cool. They're wide. And so, I posted this morning because we're expanding our headband collection. So, that's our flash sale for today. We're going to do a bling flash sale. So, it's for the Prey T, and it's already marked down. So, if you look for Prey Bling T, Brittany has it pinned. Look at Brittany. Yay, Brittany! Brittany has it pinned. You can go straight there and get it. Hey, bless somebody with it. Bless somebody with it. It's really pretty. And it's an attention getter and a conversation starter. We got that. Do I have another phone? Don't just stop me telephone. Mm, telephone. Another one. Another one. Okay. We don't have it. There's a ladybug. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Y'all. Y'all see that. It's like 15 ladybugs on my ceiling right now. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten right there. Oh, wow. We're going to be in Genesis okay. today. If you see me fanning and acting crazy, it's because the ladybugs have taken over. We're going to be in Genesis today, 37, 23 through 28. They're laughing at me, and I named it. It was for my good. Do you believe that? Do you believe that everything that you've gone through, even the things that have hurt you made you cry, do you believe that it has been for your good? And like we talked about on yesterday, if you're going through a storm, do you believe that even this storm that you're in right now is for your good? Like we talked about on yesterday, that there is strength in your storm. So do you believe that it's for your good? I do. I believe even the things that upset me are still working for my good. And so that's what we're going to look at today in Joseph when his brothers throw him in a cistern and leave him for dead. And how even in that, it was still meant for his good. So we're going to go into Genesis 37, 23 through 28. The team is fascinated by the ladybugs. <laughs> Look, I said 15, and Jay goes, there's not 15. I said, what? And there really are 15 in here. Because the other five are out there. Look at that. See? See? All right, for real. Genesis 37, 23 through 28. Y'all ready? Type it in. It's for my good. It's for my good. Here we go. All righty. Thank God for the word this morning. Here we go. Genesis 37, 23 through 28. So when Joseph arrived, check this, y'all. His brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain? By killing our brother. We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him. Let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traitors. After all. He is our brother. Our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites who were Midianite traitors. Came by Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern. And sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traitors took him to Egypt. Type it in. It's for my good. Type it in. It's for my good. So does this sound familiar? 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30. Does that sound familiar? So so we already know from yesterday we talked about how Reuben, Joseph's older brother, convinced them not to just kill Joseph in cold blood, but to put him in a cistern. But the plans of Reuben, and apparently at this point in scripture, uh, Reuben maybe had left the group because he wasn't in the group because Judah speaks up this time with plans to come back. We already know he had plans to come back and get Joseph and restore him back to Jacob. And then in so doing, Reuben felt like most likely he would regain that favor that maybe he lost once precious little Joseph was born. So nevertheless, in this passage of scripture, Reuben is not in the picture, but now Judah speaks up. So here's the thing I want to point out. As soon as they saw Joseph, what did they do? They ripped off his coat of many colors. Envy can be the cause of your destruction. Like, just the fact that you are jealous of what somebody else has, or if I'm jealous of what somebody else has, it can literally take me out. And it's like, as soon as they saw him, as soon as they were close enough to get their hands on him, and it's like, I don't know, but I was just thinking, y'all, that like, 
he wasn't in the safety of his own home. Because, you know, just like when you have siblings and your parents are home or when you were growing up, you couldn't fight your siblings with you could you you can if you want to, but there's gonna be some consequences while your parents are home. So my sister and I, we will wait. She used to abuse me, y'all. For real. Go on tell the truth this morning, Chanel. She used to abuse me. She used to curl my hair and she would just lay the curling on my forehead and burn me. <laughs> when I was a little girl, she threw me out of the high chair. She was like, I should have been the only child. I mean, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. But I, I love it all my heart. But that's sibling, rob sibling robbery, right? But she never would beat me up when mom and daddy was at home. She always waited till they were not at home. Because, of course, we were not allowed to fight. So if we're fighting in their home, it's about to it's about to go down. You see what I'm saying? So in this story, as I'm teaching it this morning, I'm like, okay, why is it? Joseph was already wearing this coat of many colors. So why is it that once he got to Dothan, did they snatch the jack the coat, excuse me, the jacket from him? The coat from him. The coat of many colors from him. Why didn't they do it at home? It's because they know Jacob wasn't gonna have it. So they waited until Joseph was out of the protection of his own home from the protection of his father and then did what they really wanted to do to him. And so as soon as they saw him and he got close enough, they snatched that coat off of him because they were so jealous of it. Just so jealous of Joseph. And so of course we already know they plot and plan, they put him in his system. But one thing as I was studying this morning, we were talking about it. They left him there to starve to death. They left him there to starve to death. Crying out in agony. We can read over in chapter 42 where he was crying out for mercy. And they sat down and had the nerve to eat. And it's just amazing how people can be so cruel and then have the nerve to have an appetite. It just lets you know that they are truly lost souls. If somebody can do something so malicious, so cruel, so evil. And to hear somebody crying and begging for help. And you sit down and break bread with your brothers like everything is all good. It just shows you that their hearts were corrupt and their bitterness and envy and they had taken over. And they weren't even thinking. They had just come into a place of just being plumb stupid, just ignorant, just foolish. And then celebrating, eating, having a good time while their brother is suffering in agony, left to starve to death. It's just, it's really sad. You know, it really, really is. And we were talking this morning. I was like, had we not started this 40-day fast with seven days of water only? I had, I, you know, I've thought about the hungry and I've done things in the past, like feed the hungry. But like on like day four, when I realized I wasn't going to be able to eat, I told Tapta, I was like, this is what starving people go through. Particularly, I said starving babies. I said, because even though my body is screaming right now, my, your flesh gets so mad at you when you're fast. I know many of y'all can relate this morning. What about those sweet babies out there who may not ever get another meal and they literally starve to death? And I just felt like, Maybe God took us to this next level of fasting because we had no plans of doing a seven-day water fast before we got into it. It's just on day three, I was like, I felt like I didn't have a release. I felt like God wanted us to go further. And it's like in that, when your stomach, have you ever just been so hungry? Like this is the, it was the hungriest I'd ever been in my life to where I'm actually content now with my soup. Because after you go seven days without food, it's like your mind is even processed the way it's supposed to. And then I was like, Lord, I said, Warrior Nation Ministries, Warrior Apparel Warrior Nation, we will feed the hungry. And I just feel like we went through that because it was suffering. Like, I mean, I don't have a better word. It was truly a different level of consecration, a different level of sacrifice. And it was truly just a great level of suffering to go through seven days when your stomach actually just aches. Like it just gnaws at you all day long and saying, feed me, I'm hungry. Feed me, I'm hungry. And it got so bad where I couldn't even stand the way water tasted. And then there are people who don't even have access to clean water. There are people right now that don't even have access to drinking water. And it's like, did the Lord allow Joseph's brothers, even though the enemy meant it for bad, did the Lord allow Joseph's brothers to put him in this cistern, you know, to cry out for water and food so that he could relate later to a suffering nation that he was going to lead? It's like the brothers meant it for bad, the enemy meant it for bad, but could perhaps that, that sacrifice and that pain and those cries for help could help Joseph better understand later when his brothers come back to him on bending knee and they're crying out for help. And when Joseph's over a land that is going to go through a seven year famine, like had Joseph not experienced what it's like to be thrown into the cistern and not know where his next meal was going to come from or if it was going to come, would he have been able to strategize and empathize with a whole nation of people who had to endure seven years of famine? To where his very brothers have to come back to him and beg for food because they're literally starving to death. And so I was like, okay, that means that even though the enemy meant it for bad, God still meant it for good because it allowed Joseph to be able to empathize and understand what it means like to be at the mercy of someone else. And even though his brothers did not show him mercy at that time, yet and still it is our responsibility as Christians to extend mercy to others, even when no mercy has been extended to you by someone else. 
And it's like, then Judah speaks up. You see how God always, even among your enemies, he will raise up an advocate for you. Type it in, it's for my good. It's like he'll raise up an advocate for you. And here goes Judah. Why don't we just sell him? Because I'm thinking about this thing now, y'all. And if we just leave him here for dead, we're going to have to explain to our father what we did with his precious son. But if we sell him into slavery, okay, at least we won't have to cover up the murder. And so it just, people say it just so happens, but no, it's divine providence. It was the hand of God. Just like the hand of God is upon you this morning. And it was the hand of God that sent that caravan at just the right time. And this is the best part of all. They thought, number one, by snatching that coat of many colors off and throwing them in that cistern, that he would never rule over them. And that their dream that he shared with them, that they so easily and readily interpreted, would never come true because they tried to thwart the plans of God. But then it just so happens that the Lord at the right time will send that caravan and then they get this great idea to sell him into slavery, thinking they were getting rid of him when in actuality them selling him into slavery pushed him and positioned him for his next level because that's where he was going to rule in Egypt. They thought they were going to get rid of him. But in actuality, it was divine providence and it was their hands, their evil hands that was actually pushing him into his purpose. Same for you today. The very ones who are trying to stop you could actually be helping you and they don't even know it. The very ones that are causing you trouble. The ones who make you cry. The ones like, oh my goodness, is this ever going to end? Because with nothing else, it's building character in you. And it's teaching you how to endure. You know, and when you're going through that season, there is a point of time for your suffering to end. But at the same time, just think about this morning. This is for my good because everything that I'm going through is actually pushing me. It's pushing me closer to the Lord. It is strengthening my prayer life. And it is taking me closer to my destiny. And therefore, regardless of what it looks like, it is for our good. It was for our good and it's going to be for our good because all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So yes, his brothers hated him. Yes, they were jealous of him. They couldn't wait to snatch their coat off of him. They threw him in a cistern. They were going to starve him to death. Just cruel, brutal. And then here goes Judah. Let's sell him into slavery. Think he has some kind of grand idea. Oh, it was a perfect idea. It was the hand of God. And he, they followed it not even realizing that they were following the hand of God, the plan of God. Just amazing. And so your enemies who are trying to work overtime to stop you could very well be pushing you. Because I admit, you know, I'm off of my job now where I was at the VA for eight years and for a season. It was just, a, I had a very difficult season at the VA to where the very people that I worked with couldn't stand me. And they wrote, signed a petition and kicked me out of the department. And it was so embarrassing. It was so cruel. But do you know that promoted me? Because if had they not signed their petition and put me out of their department... I would not be right here right now. I would probably still be down there trying to supervise. And that is not what God had for me. It was meant for evil. It was meant to bring me to public shame. But oh, God has a way of shaming those who try to shame you. He has a way of lifting you above the heads of your enemies. He has a way of causing people to say, hands down, the hand of the Lord is upon him. The hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is upon her. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it. It's not a devil in hell that can stop it. It's for your good. Hold your head up. It's 2018. It's going to be a great year. And we just know that everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, it is all working together for our good. We talked about the trees yesterday, right? We talked about how they don't get strong with one storm. It's the multiplicity of the storms. It's the comeback after the comeback. It's the strong winds to make you stronger. All of it, y'all. So don't be mad when people don't like you or give you trouble. Thank God. Rejoice in it because it is working for your good and it is pushing you closer towards your de destiny. Amen, Jalen. Amen. Jay my little girl over here talking about something. Woo! Talking about, yes, like... Got him. Yes. If if that's hitting an 18 year old college student, then glory to God. Glory to God. So I praise God for that. It's working for your good. Type it in. It's going to prayer. Yes, it's going to be a great year. Type it in. This is my year. This is my year. Thank you, Tish. I love you. God is going to provide everything that you need, your medications and everything that you need in Jesus name. Y'all ready? I'm excited today. Like I've had um, a hard couple of weeks, I would say. But, then I, but I realized that, you know what? Mm mm. The Lord will give me peace and he'll give you peace. And we're not going to focus on what's not going right. We're going to focus on what is. And one thing I know for sure, this is our year. And I know that. And it's going to come to pass this year. We're not just talking. This is our year. And so the difficult things, the crazy things, the things like, okay, where did that come from? It's okay. It's all good. Because all of it is working for our good. We rejoice in the suffering. In our weaknesses, the Lord Jesus is made strong. His strength is revealed. His power, his glory is revealed during our difficult times. Let's go into prayer. Father, we are so thankful this morning that it is all good. 
And it is all working for our good. And we thank you for this excellent example in scripture with Joseph, Lord, and how he begged and pleaded for his life. And yet his brothers had a feast instead. But, oh, God, you just have a way of turning things around. And the very ones who have set out to destroy us, God, you will cause them to be our footstools, Lord. You allow us to step up off of whatever they are trying to do to destroy us and catapult us into our destinies. And we just thank you for it this morning. You're so good to us, Lord. This is our year. We're going to speak it all year. We're going to see it. We just believe, God, this is the year, the year that we shall walk in wealthy places, God, the year that we shall experience the full manifestation of the prayer of Jabez in our lives, God. And so we just thank you this morning. This is our year for healing. This is our year for breakthroughs. This is the year of miracles. This is the year, a special year, a very special year. And we're just so thankful and humbled, Lord, for we were called, we were born for a time such as this. And we honor you for it this morning. Lord, I ask you to go before every warrior. And make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight, and bring every high place low. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that is risen up against them shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Guys, we step out into this world today. It's dark. It's difficult. It's scary sometimes. But Father, no. We step out with your full armor. We're the belt of truth around our waist, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We were sandals of peace. We carry the shield of faith and the sword of spirit, which is your word. Father, let your word, your precious word, your word that is inerrant, let your word be hidden in our hearts. We will not sin again against you. We honor you. We give you glory for your word. Warriors, whatever it is this morning, whatever you believe in God to do, whatever situation you are in, whether you need favor in the courtroom, whether you need a healing in your body, a loved one needs to be healed, a marriage needs to be restored, a reconciled, a family, a relationship needs to be mended. Maybe your heart is broken this morning and you need, Lord, to fix it. Just type it in, Lord, fix it this morning. Lord, I need you to mend my heart. Maybe you're harboring unforgiveness. Maybe you're harboring unforgiveness against yourself. Maybe there's something that you've done and you don't want to forgive yourself, but you have to release it so that you can have all that God has has for you this year. There's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. So whatever the enemy is bringing to you and reminding you of what you have done, he's a liar. He's the father of lies. He can only speak lies with to shut his mouth with the truth. And so Father, this morning we thank you for every name that is being typed in, every circumstance, every situation. If you need a job, if you've been searching, we've been praying and people have been getting jobs left and right. We just pray this morning, Father, that the gates of employment will open wide for your sons and daughters in need of a job or a better job, a career. Father, we thank you to open those doors. If you need to go back to school and you, you can't figure out how you're going to pay for it, Father, we thank you for provision. If your children are getting ready for college or they're in college and you're struggling with tuition, Father, we thank you for grants, just breakthroughs, just unexpected happenings. Father, we thank you if you're battling with student loans. Father, we just believe leave you for loan forgiveness, Lord. You're working this thing out for us by faith. We just honor you for it this morning. And those in need of a healing, Father, you are Jehovah Rapha. And God, today as these names go up, Anitris, we lift her up to you. Chanel, we lift her up to you. Tish, we lift her up to you, Father. We just thank you for Jordan and Shania and Jahai. We lift them up. Our sweet, precious Avery, we lift her up. The babies, our sweet babies, McKinley and Mariah Grace and Tonto, Lord. Gabriel, Jeremiah, we lift them up to you. Any baby in need of a healing, type their names in, warriors. Father, we lift these sweet children up to you today. Your children, God, we ask you allow them to be strong and mighty in the earth. Father, we thank you for those, you know, who are pregnant or want to be pregnant. God, that you will bless these couples, Lord. You will bless them with fruit of the womb, God, that that fruit will remain. If your pregnancy is high risk, God, today, just send your angels to encamp around those wombs, God, and protect those seeds because understand that the enemy is after our seeds. But we say no, he cannot have our children. He cannot have our seeds. And we thank you for it today. Father, we honor you for your goodness. Please answer the prayers of every warrior. Let them know their sacrifices are waking up with us early in the morning and studying and fasting and praying and declaring your word is not in vain. That when you speak a word, you will bring it to pass. We thank you for it today. Allow today to be a day filled with miracles, blessed moments, happy times, victory dances, Lord. We honor you for being the God of a turnaround, and we thank you for this year. For we understand that this is our year, that we shall walk in wealthy places, and we understand that everything that has happened to us, God, it has all been for our good. And for your glory, we honor you. Like our sister said yesterday, these storms make us better, not bitter. We thank you for this morning that these storms are making us better and not bitter. We honor you, God. Bless our day. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Ooh, that made me feel good. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. I just, fasting takes you to a place that you won't get to otherwise. And so, hey, this is our best year yet. I love y'all very much. Don't forget to check out our, um, our flash sale on the Bling Pray. And we're also, our headbands are there, and you can still get your notebooks. Y'all are buying up some notebooks. Oh, when those come in, we're going to be very, very busy in a couple of days. So, um, thank you, your miracle journals and everything. We love you guys very much, and we'll check with you later. Have an amazing, miraculous warrior day. Amen? We good, y'all? Brittany? I got to wait for Brittany to tell me I'm good. Am I good, Brittany? See? See, Brittany? See? She didn't say yes. <laughs> Father, we thank you. 
What is it, Britt? Just my earphones. If you don't hear, they're gonna hear my stomach growling. Go ahead. We're done.